Assalamu alaikum, everyone. This is uh, Shariq Arfan, your brother from uh, Detroit, Michigan. Um, I would like to, um, you know, officially welcome you to the ICNA National Symposium. The theme for today is, uh, indeed, I am near. Um, so uh, that is the theme, and inshallah, we're going to have uh, a packed seminar. So next up that we have is uh, Sheikh Yasir Qadi. Sheikh Yasir Qadi is the resident scholar of East Plano Islamic Center. He's also the dean of the newly formed Islamic Seminary. He graduated from University of Medina and recently completed his PhD from Yale. And I promise myself that if I ever get a chance to introduce Sheikh Yasir Qadi, I'll go with this, is that he now has a mocktail named somewhere um, <laughs> after him. I'm still looking where, but uh, maybe he can expand on it. Alhamdulillah, so, alhamdulillah. Zakallah khair, bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu um, the mocktail is uh, called the Shake YQ Mango Shake, and it is at uh, uh, a nice halal restaurant here in uh, Dallas uh, that actually we ordered from yesterday. And it's a concoction that I myself devised. Alhamdulillah, I'm a big fan of mango shakes, and the owner was kind enough to name a particular mango shake that I derived after me. Alhamdulillah. Uh, anyway, Alhamdulillah, with that um, uh, humorous introduction, um, the topic at hand is actually one that I've spoken quite a lot about, I've even written a book about, but it becomes so pertinent, especially in light of the times that we are living in. And honestly, I am still in a daze as to the realities of our days and night. I feel as if we're watching the scene out of some type of horror movie, uh, just walking around, you know, going to the masjid. I have to go to the masjid to give my lecture, to give the khutbah to an empty masjid. I'm still not fully recovered and i don't know if i ever will recover per se from what we are facing right now the things that we literally took for granted i never thought that walking outside and going to a, a souk or a bazaar is actually something that is uh, something we have to be thankful for or appreciative for you just take it for granted i never thought that meeting you know my family you know we haven't met some of my uncles and aunts and you know it's just very you know, we've had some, you know, uh, pass, uh, some uncle passed away as well, and I could, we could not even go in this time frame. It's just so, it's a very difficult time for all of us, and Allah Musta'an, uh, that is why the topic that has been assigned to me is actually something that is extremely pertinent and extremely relevant. And it is, in a brief nutshell, the etiquettes and the manners of dua, the importance of dua. Because when it comes to this calamity, I think... I think all of us are on the same wavelength, the people that I'm speaking with, I think we're all on the same wavelength, that this is indeed a communal calamity. It is a type of adab that is meant to remind us, and I've spoken about this a lot of times in a number of my previous lectures. We need to differentiate between a communal adab and a personal adab. And a communal adab is not the same as a personal adab. A communal adab, a, a punishment and a calamity that comes on a society does not mean that every single member of that society is guilty. It also does not mean that every single member is going to be punished in the akhirah. But it does mean that society as a whole has failed. And society as, as a whole has crossed the red lines that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want that society to cross. And that is something that is theologically explicit in the Quran, as I have said yani, uh, in previous khutbahs and lectures. So purpose for today is Allah says in the Quran, فَلَوْلَا إِذْ جَاءَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا تَضَرَّعُوا Allah is asking a rhetorical question. Allah is saying that why didn't they reach out to us in prayer? when our adab came to them. Why didn't they do tadarru? And tadarru is the highest form of dua. Dua has many forms. Dua has many states. And Allah says in the Quran, Ud'u rabbakum tadarru'an wa khufya. Make dua to your Lord with tadarru and with khufya. And tadarru means with the utmost humility. It means you lay your soul bare in front of Allah. You expose your innermost weaknesses and thoughts. And you tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you confess your sins to Allah. And you beg and plead Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what you want. That is tadarru. It is the highest 
form of dua. And Allah commands us to do tadarru' in all situations when we need something. And especially it is linked with a generic adab. فَلَوْلَا إِذْ جَاءَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا تَضَرَّعُوا وَلَكِنْ قَسَّتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَزَّيَّنَ لَهُمْ وَالشَّيْطَانُ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah says, when our adab came down, why didn't they invoke us with humility? Make dua to us from the depths of their hearts. But no, Allah says, their hearts were sealed. قَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ And Allah, shaytan made it pleasing to them what they were doing. And what is, you know, more terrifying to me personally than what we are seeing now? What is more terrifying to me personally, and I'll tell this to you, and it's a very personal thing, but I will share it publicly with all of you, that it is terrifying to me that society does not seem to be understanding that collectively they need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, in previous times, in plagues, even a hundred years ago, in 1918, when the Spanish influenza came, you find a general sense of religiosity, even in this population. You found people going to their churches and synagogues. You found people rediscovering faith, rediscovering their belief in a higher power. Unfortunately, from what I'm seeing now, that is simply not happening. And it is as if, like Allah says in the Quran, وَلَكِنْ قَسَّتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Their hearts have become like rock solid. وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And whatever they were doing, Shaitan made it so pleasing to them that they continued in their false illusion. And to me, that is more terrifying than the coronavirus itself, that people don't seem to be understanding that they need to wake up from this slumber and, to, and need to reconnect with a higher power. And Allah Musta'an, we have nothing we can do other than turn to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. So much ibra, so much moral lessons we can extract. How arrogant mankind was to presume they have reached the pinnacle of might and power how arrogant all of us subconsciously were that we have gone to the moon and come back and we have done this and that and yet look this small minuscule virus came and not a single superpower can come between it and the qadr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not all of our technology not all of our medicine not a single aspect of our science we might understand a little bit of how the virus works but we to this day, by the way, we do not have an actual solid clue as to how it gets transferred and why it attacks certain patients other than others and how it's actually functioning to the level that we can create a vaccine. Inshallah, eventually we'll get there because this is the blessing of Allah that our Prophet said, never does Allah reveal a disease except that he also reveals the cure. Whoever knows, knows. Whoever doesn't, doesn't. But that's the beauty of our faith. Wallahi, it is so beautiful. And in all of this, in all of this, I thank Allah and I hope all of you can really and truly be appreciative of the blessings of Iman, the blessings of faith. Can you imagine having to face this crisis and spiritually a person is dead and empty? Can you imagine under trying to make sense of this world and what is going on without the guidance of the Quran and Sunnah? Alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah, I thank Allah. We should all thank Allah. Alhamdulillah, illadhi hadana lihadha wa ma kunna linahtadiya we thank Allah for having guided us to this reality and we would never have been guided had it not been for the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all of these aspects are really just preliminary issues that I wanted us to just get it. I, I couldn't help but give a talk without, you know, talking about these other issues as well, uh, because I really feel strongly that this whole coronavirus issue is a wake up call for us Muslims in particular and for all of humanity. So briefly, I only have a few minutes left and then hand it back to our hosts. Uh, briefly, the issue of dua, a lot of people, uh, they really don't understand the spirit of dua and the etiquettes of dua. And I'm still getting bombarded with emails and questions and tweets and Facebooks that, uh, Sheikh, what is the dua I should be saying? Give me the, uh, uh, the phrase that I should uh, uh, say at this time. And they say that what is the what is the specific phrase that needs to be said? They want a magic formula is what they want. To be brutally honest, they just want, they think that if they wave a magic wand and they say these particular phrases, everything will be fine. And that's not the reality of dua. The reality of dua is much more different than this. In fact, we learn from the Quran and Sunnah that it's not the phrasing. It's not the phrasing that matters. It is the psychological reality, the spirituality. It is your own frame of mind. In fact, the phrasing is irrelevant. You know what Ibn Taymiyyah says? Ibn Taymiyyah says when he's talking about dua, Ibn Taymiyyah says, 
by unanimous consensus of all of the scholars of Islam, if a person makes a mistake in the wording of the dua and he says something that is the exact opposite of what he actually intended, Allah is not going to care about the wording and Allah will care about the niyyah that comes from the heart. So we need to understand, as is very clear in the Quran, and in the sunnah, that the purpose of dua is not just to utter some magical formula and say these things 10 times and everything will be fine. The purpose of dua is to reactivate our spirituality, our connection with Allah, our humility. It is our iman and our taqwa. That is what is wanted. And that is why our Prophet wasallam said that Allah does not accept the dua from the qalb that is ghafil, that is disconnected. Allah does not accept the dua from the qalb that is disconnected connected from Allah that is heedless and that is why the number one factor that causes the dua to be accepted is tadarru and that is a sense of humility that is a sense of, of utmost uh, uh, putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and understanding that none can answer dua uh, other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have as well in the beautiful uh, narration of the three who stayed behind in Tabuk. And remember that story. And actually mentioned in a previous khutbah last week, or was it two weeks ago, that subhanAllah, they were punished by isolation. That was the punishment of the three who remained behind at Tabuk. Remember the story? That that the three people that remained behind uh, when they didn't go to the battle of Tabuk, what was their punishment? from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they have social isolation. Everybody has to remain cut off from other. And now it is as if all of us have been given that punishment of social isolation. And then what was their way out? What did Allah say was their way out? Look at the Quran, Surah Tawbah. That phrase, I want you to understand it. I want you to underline it. I want you to read it. Read it in Surah Tawbah. Allah says, the three people who remain behind until they felt this world, despite all of its vastness, this world was tight on them. SubhanAllah, how true that seems now. Despite all of its vastness, the world seems empty. The world seems something is wrong with it. Allah says, despite all of the vastness of this earth, their chests felt constrained. And then they realized, There is no one to turn to, to protect yourself from Allah. Illa ilayhi, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the spirit of dua. Dear Muslims, don't worry about phrases. Don't worry about magical formulas. Don't worry about specific words. Think of your heart. Examine your state of spiritual, psycho psychological mentality. Lower your head. Humble yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, in words that are coming from your heart, in a language that you speak fluently, make your you don't need to be taught words to make dua what you need is the proper spirituality what you need is the absolute submission to allah and that is the word tadarru you you need to lower and humble yourself in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then raise your hands up to allah from the depths of your heart in the language you know best in your mother tongue, whether it's Urdu, whether it's Swahili, whether it's German or English, whether it is Latin, it doesn't matter because the dua is not dependent on the words. The dua is dependent on the qalb. You use words that you know best and you express it in a manner that you know best. Allah is not looking at your eloquence. There is none who is more eloquent than him. Allah is no, not looking at fancy words put together. Allah is wanting to see your state of the qalb and heart and wanting to see your tabarru to him from the depths of your heart. Raise your hands up and then beg and plead Allah to protect you and protect your family and protect your loved ones and ask Allah for repentance and hidayah and ask Allah for the good of this world and the good of the next world and ask Allah for each and every need that you have because if you don't ask Allah there's no one else worthy of asking and if Allah does not will it for you then none will give it to you I conclude with that beautiful narration of Aisha radiallahu anha which is found in Sunan al-Tirmidhi in which she advised her students she said that oh my students if your shoelace breaks if your shoelace breaks don't be shy to ask Allah to fix your shoelace because if Allah is not going to fix your shoelace no one else will 
Don't be embarrassed or shy to ask Allah for anything and everything. Turn to Allah for all of your needs and don't worry about the wording. Look at your soul and your heart and implement when Allah says in the Quran, why didn't they make tadarru' to us when our adab came down? This is a communal adab. We want to be saved from the individual adab and that will be done by each and every one of us turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when enough of us turn to Allah the communal adab itself will be lifted up. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect me and you and my loved ones and your loved ones. May Allah protect the ummah and the bilad and the ibad. May Allah azza wa jal lift from us the waba and the ta'oon. May Allah azza wa jal lift from us this plague that we have seen in our lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and guide others through us and give us the best of this world and of the next world. Wa jazakumullahu khayran. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair, uh, Sheikh Yasir Qadi, for uh, the beautiful reminder that dua is really what we all need uh, during this time. So that I'd like to remind before I sign off and hand over is um, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, uh, that even though the convention that we all miss and love um, is not able to go on, um, you know, the, this work never stops. That's that's what I wanted to kind of emphasize on that. Alhamdulillah, we have the symposium. Um, we have different departments and wings of ikna uh, proactively out there on the front lines taking care of the community in need so i would uh, really encourage and urge all of you to take some time and donate um at uh, www.ikna.org forward slash donate so jazakallah khair for your time